Welcome to Wellness with John, resources to help you thrive. I'm John Peters. And in this video, I want to talk about an extremely effective way to reduce your overall stress load by doing a particular type of thing at the work home transition. Stay tuned. Okay, so in today's video, I want to share with you a stress management pro tip of a very simple, easy thing you can do that can have a big impact on your overall stress load. And I share this because over the years, and I've been in practice for about 26 years now, I have talked with so many people who have work stress and who tell me that they notice in a variety of ways that that work stress carries through to their home life, right? Now, at the physiological level, this makes sense because when our fight or flight response, our stress response gets triggered, part of what happens internally is stress hormones get kicked out and those have a certain half-life. They don't, they don't wear off immediately, even if you're out of the situation. So when you leave work, Part of the explanation of why that stress continues is because the nervous system physiological action of the stress response continues. Now, also mentally, there is coherence and continuity of the stressor, which means basically when you leave work, you don't immediately forget work, right? There's that show on Netflix or wherever it is about people who have that kind of experience. but that's contrived and what happens is something annoys you it sticks in your mind and certain parts of the brain fixate on the target of the stress and glue your attention to that and won't let go so that's another reason that mentally things from work carry over into the non-work portion of your day and your life because there is attention fixated on the stuff even if you don't instrumentally need to be contemplating and swirling around in some sort of working out the issue when you're not at work. You really could instrumentally leave it at work, but your mind will not let go of it and it carries over into your home life. And people will tell me that, you know, they notice this kind of work to home stress effect because they get home and they feel subjectively anxious and stressed or they can't stop ruminating or worrying about a work issue or <clears throat> they find that it's erupting in misdirected ways, like I talked with a guy recently who had noticed that more days than not, when he got home from work, minutes later, he was having some sort of angry parenting reaction at his kid. And maybe it was an appropriate reaction in general in terms of the kid doing something that deserved a response. But he was noticing that the tone of his response was influenced by carrying work stress into the home time of each day after work, right? So here's, here's a really effective thing uh, that, and I say this is effective because I've suggested to many people who've tried it and it's worked, and I've had people spontaneously do it on their own and report to me that they do stuff like this and it works, okay? So what you want to do is at the transition from work to home, and for some people this is on the commute home, and for some people this is when you arrive at home and the first thing you do when you get out of your car, you arrive at your residence, okay? But basically, there's the work part of your day, and there's the home part of your day. And there is some line we could draw at some point, let's say, when you pull your car into the driveway and shut it off, okay? There's some moment where the form of what was happening before and the form of what's going to happen again has particular contours, and so we can draw that line right there, okay? So that's the place where you want to stick this strategy. And what you want to do is you want to come up with a strategy that serves a couple of functions. One function is you want to give your brain basically an excuse <clears throat> to change yourself mentally from state A I was at work to stay B. Now I'm not at work. Okay. And I'll come back to that and talk about why that's important. But the other 
function of this is to actually dissipate the work stress. Okay. And so I tend to recommend some type of strategy that serves both of those functions. Okay. So we'll talk about function number one give your brain an excuse to move from state A to state B. Our brains don't like ambiguity. And when there's ambiguity, what our brains tend to do is spread stuff out all the way to the horizon. And so that's why if you go to like a, a ritual, um, there are specific elements of a ritual that let you know it has begun, it's still going on, and now it's, it's ended. So for example, a wedding ritual. Weddings come in lots of varieties in terms of the elements of the wedding rituals that people choose to do. But if you think about it, when you've gone and witnessed a wedding, or if you're married and you did a wedding, there's always some elements that let you know, okay, unambiguously, everybody here, without explicitly saying it, we know that the wedding ritual has begun, okay? And at some point, it's like, we know that it has ended. Now the ritual is done. We can go to the reception. They're married. You know, it's finished. And we don't necessarily think about that that way, unless you're a sociologist studying rituals and sociology and, and things like that. But it really does exist that way. If you look at any sort of secular or religious ritual, there's an onset, there's some middle part, and there's an offset. And we need mentally for the onset and the offset to be unambiguous, okay? But some types of states or transitions, like the work-to-home transition, can be ambiguous. And of course, do I know I'm at work? Do I know I'm at home? Yes, that's unambiguous. But the mental state of, I want to not be in the work mode, I want to distinctly exit that mode and be in the non-work home mode, having a ritual gives your brain an excuse to go from state A to state B, just like a wedding ritual, if it's unambiguous and it's clear, okay, yes, we're in it, now we're out of it, yes, now they're married, okay, unambiguously, we've gone from state A, not married, to state B, married, right? So, so we don't have to do something as elaborate as a wedding ritual every time we get home from work, but something simple that it could be as simple as I get out of my car, I'm going to stand and I'm going to assume a certain position. I'm going to do a certain thing. It could be totally contrived. Any special thing that you do right there lets you know that you've gotten home. Okay. I talked to a guy one time who told me one of the things he does is when he leaves his office and he walks to where he parks his car in the parking lot, he stops at a particular tree that's near the parking space that he always uses and he just puts his hand on the tree. And he imagines his work stress going into the tree and into the ground, and then he gets in his car, okay? So that ritual actually performs both of the functions that I'm talking about in this video. It gives his brain an excuse to switch from A to B. I've done something explicit, okay? And it literally would take him three seconds, five seconds to do that. But it also serves the other function, which I'll talk about here in a second. So, um, so... Do something at the work home transition. It could be anything. It could be totally contrived. It can seem crazy and unrelated to everything. It's just something to give your brain an excuse of I'm moving from work mode to home mode. Okay. That lets you more fully switch into the home mode and let go of the mental glue that's gluing you into the work crap that you might otherwise bring along with you. Okay. Now, with the other function, to the extent that you've loaded up and accumulated some stress at work during the work shift, you might want to do something that actually dissipates it. So in the example I gave of the guy putting his hands on the tree, he was mentally imagining, okay, my work stress is flowing out of my body into the tree, into the ground, okay? So I tend to recommend something like that, some sort of grounding or uh, mindfulness exercise to make you present. So you could do the three, two, one exercise. The three, two, one is uh, name three things you see in that moment. Name two things that you hear. You know, I hear a bird chirping. I hear the blower on the furnace or whatever. And then name one thing that you feel. Okay, if you're standing next to your car having just gotten home, I feel the sensation of my feet on the ground or something like that. So the three, two, one mindfulness exercise is a way to ground or like the guy with the tree, literally ground. I mean, you know, touch the car, touch the ground feel your feet on the ground, uh, touch a tree, imagine stress flowing out of your body and into the earth. The earth is a big 
repository able to absorb a lot of our mental stress, even if you're not real super cosmic and new agey and you don't want to think about frou frou kind of energy lines and stuff like that. Even if you're a complete realist, um, you could still mentally benefit from just imagining the stress going out of you into the ground or doing a mindfulness exercise to just come into the present moment. You don't have to sit down and do a 20 minute meditation. Although for some people doing like one minute of mindful breathing is a good way to do a grounding ritual at the work home transition. Okay, so hopefully this is helpful to you. I strongly encourage you to get creative and experiment with what can you do in the line between work and home or the space like during the commute from work to home that can help serve these two functions. Give your mind an excuse to switch modes from work to home and to have some sort of being present, being relaxed, being mindful grounding, okay? So if you like this kind of content, feel very free to hit the like button below. If you like the channel, uh, definitely subscribe. And I appreciate comments. So if you experiment with the stuff that I suggested in this video and you want to leave comments below, I, I welcome those because it helps me get good feedback about how people are taking in the content from the channel and helps me craft future content that I'm going to make in future videos, right? And if you'd like a free ebook to help you with your stress, you can go to courses.johnpeters.online slash free stress ebook. And you can download a free ebook that gives you some easy to learn, easy to practice exercises that will immediately start helping you lower your stress. I'll put the link down in the description below and feel free to check that out and stay tuned to the channel because I'm going to be posting more videos in the near future. All right. Thanks.